Jerry Grotowski was a Polish theater director, educator, and creator of the acting style Poor Theater. He was born August 11th, 1933 in Poland, and from 1951 to 1955, he studied at the National Theater Academy in Krakow, where he received his degree in acting. He then went to study directing at the State Institute of Theater Arts in Moscow, and it was here where he really delved in deep and learned about different acting techniques and approaches cultivated by the greats of Russian theater and really theater in general, such as Stanislavski and Meyerhold. After finishing his studies in Moscow, he returned to Poland and became an assistant professor at the theater school in Krakow. He began studying stage directing and debuted as a director in 1957 when he co-directed the play Chairs at the Starry Theater with Alexandra Minasko. As a director, he would push his actors as far as they would go, saying, acting is not just a job, but a way of life. In 1958, Krotowski moved to Opal, Poland, where he was invited by Ludwig Flaskin, a theater critique and dramaturg, to serve as director of the Theater of 13 Rows. He had a team of nine permanent actors who he intensively trained. The goal was to completely master the body, movement, and voice. He thought that the actor had to go through a physiological and physical transformation to recover what was behind what he called the mask or to recover the immediacy a child has. Krotowski would often come into rehearsal and say, I don't believe it. And that was it. And they had to start all over again. Or he'd say, I believe it. Or I don't understand, but I believe it. And it really forced the actors to think and to search. Um, Krotowski was actually doing some pretty radical things for the time. He was rewriting classics, changing them, cutting them. He reshaped the relationship between the actors and the audience. He believed that theater could exist without all the excess. He wanted to strip down theater to its purest form and focus on things he felt that really mattered. The actors, their skills and abilities, and the relationship between the characters and audience. Krotowski continuously invited the audience as part of the production. He did this in Shakuntala, where the audience was a collective hero, Forefather's Eve, where the audience were participants in a ritual, and in Cordion, where the audience were patients in the psychiatric ward. Some of his other more famous productions are Orpheus and Acropolis. Acropolis was his first complete realization of poor theater. In this play, the actors built the structure of the crematorium around the audience, while acting out scenes from the Bible and Greek mythology. So they really eliminated stage and audience and they got rid of it. Um, this really resonated with the audience in Opal because Auschwitz was only 60 miles away. A film was even made with an introduction by Peter Brook. This is probably one of the most accessible records of Grotowski's work. Not everybody was happy about his work though. Local communist officials in Opal tried to get him removed from his post. But Bukowski, always a strategist, went as far as getting his actors to sign up for the communist party to get the party officials off his back. At the time, this was considered a serious act of moral betrayal and shows how far Grotowski was willing to go to produce his work. And in 1981, the leader of communist Poland declared martial law. This meant mass arrests of opposing activists, severe censorship, curfews, and the end of civil rights. Poland was under a military dictatorship and Krotowski was convinced that he would be arrested and that the laboratory theater would be shut down. So he fled to the United States on political assignment and stayed with his friend, Andre Gregory. There in New York, he worked at Columbia University for a year until in 1983, he was invited by Robert Cohen, a professor at UC Irving, to go and continue his work. There, he began the Objective Drama Program, where Grotowski and his team researched the impact of cultural songs and other performative tools from traditional cultures, specifically Haitian and African diaspora. Grotowski began working with a young actor from Yale University, Thomas Richards, who later became part of his core circle. Krotowski 
pass on to him the work on acting and the songs of tradition. The work on acting included a deep analysis of human behavior and the songs on tradition were designed to help human beings process different levels of human nature which are intensified through song. Grotowski was feeling the pressure from the university to present his work, but it wasn't ready, so him and his team lost funding. But he was invited to the small town Pontedera in Tuscany, giving him a strong connection to Italian scholars and Italian practice. During the Italian period of his work, Grotowski knew he was dying. He spent a lot of that time transmitting his knowledge and experience to Thomas Richards, who would later carry on that work. Grotowski started working on the art as a vehicle during his time in Italy. The basis of this was to show how the performing arts can be a tool for the transformation of the artist's perception and presence. In 1986, the Work Center was founded in Italy. Although Grotowski was inviting people to see the work, it was pretty isolated. Usually five people at a time, or one person, then three months, nobody, then another person. It was a very slow and gradual process. This was to show that Grotowski was done with theater and directing and allow the actors to really work. Unfortunately, Grotowski died on January 13th, 1999, at the age of 65. His ashes were scattered at the Sacred Hill in southern India. Thanks to Thomas Richards, among many others as well, the work center continues to live on. The work is still super intensive as Grotowski intended it to be. The people who come to the center make a lot of personal sacrifices to do so and dive into this intensive work cut off from the rest of the world. During Grotowski's life, he became quite controversial. His performances were called elitist by some. Some of his actors had a hard time adjusting after all the psychologically strenuous work they had been doing. But any artist who is going to push the boundaries like Grotowski did is going to receive some type of controversy. Despite this, his legacy still lives on and inspires. The Work Center travels to eight to 10 different countries, holding workshops and performances every year. And Grotowski is known as one of the greatest directors of all time, because in a span of 10 year period, he was creating performances that resonated with not only Poland, but the whole world. He never tried to imitate TV or film in any ways, believing in the magic of live theater and every day he questioned, what is the potential inside of a human being? Grotowski was a workaholic. He never married or had any children. He lived his work. Grotowski and all his hard work has truly innovated theater. Thank you.